For the sixth straight game, Russell Westbrook messed around and got a triple-double, and the Thunder won. It is the fourth longest triple-double streak in NBA history behind Wilt Chamberlain, who had nine in a row, and the Big O and MJ, who both had streaks of seven. It was Westbrook's 11th triple-double this season, while the rest of the league has 11 combined, and Russ is currently averaging a triple-double this season with 32 points, 11.3 assists, and 10.9 rebounds. Max, get yeah. him in. Yeah. Is he a lock? Yes, MVP? he was a lock for MVP before the season started, and his main competition was going to come from James Harden, which it's coming from James Harden because of D'Antoni. Um, but Russell Westbrook, as I said before, the season's going to win it. He's doing exactly what I thought he'd do. I do not think he's going to average a triple-double throughout the course of the season, but the fact that he can even do it this deep into the season is because he's incredibly talented, and the man is a sociopath with a basketball. He has no conscience. It's the reason he's my favorite player, my favorite player. But I do admit that, he is playing a brand of basketball that some purists don't like because they feel that kind of idolatry of Westbrook and that brand of basketball, and some of the same people felt the same way about Kobe and Iverson before him, is, um, is, is glorifying the wrong kind of stuff in basketball, the one-on-one -on -one play versus team play, although if you're averaging double-digit assists, you're obviously also sharing the ball. Um, I just love this kind of unbridled aggression, this kind of sense, Stephen A, that a guy's like, I'm gonna put this whole thing on my shoulders and just carry you there. And by the way, this, the last six games, the triple doubles in the last six games have all come in wins. He's winning as he's doing this stuff. You know, he's just an amazing player. But the issue with him, so he's gonna win the MVP. The numbers are gonna be there and his team will win more games than they should. And, They'll make the playoffs, and Westbrook will get MVP. The handcuffs are off. Durant's not there. It's his team. But um, same thing's going to happen in the playoffs that it always does, I'm afraid. I wish it weren't the case. But a guy like Westbrook, who clearly feels he has to do so much all the time, I think when the playoffs roll around, feels that pressure of having to do too much. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's resulted in his bad fourth quarters oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect anything to change in the long run, but he's going to win MVP this year. Russell Westbrook, you and I both picked him to win league MVP honors this year. Um, do I think he's on course to do it? Sure. Where you and I disagree is you think it's a lock. I think that's insane. It's not a lock. All right? And I'm not even bringing LeBron into the equation because you and I both agree you can give LeBron the MVP every year with what he means to his team. But Max Kellerman, Russell Westbrook shoot 42% from the field. He's averaging 5.6 turnovers per game. We understand what he brings to the table, but also Harden's numbers are, you know, equitable to his. I mean, Harden, you're talking about Harden's averaging 28.7, 11.3 assists. I mean, you know, you know 11.3 reasons, about nearly eight assists. He's shooting better from the field. He's shooting better from three-point range, averaging, averaging about the same amount of turnovers. But let's also take a moment to give credit where credit is due. Mike D'Antoni's doing a hell of a job thus far. We got to give him credit where credit is due because Lord knows I was critical of him in the past when he was in New York, not critical at all of him when he was in Phoenix because I thought he was phenomenal. And I certainly was critical of him running Kobe into the ground with Kobe averaging about 45 minutes the last month of the season before he tore his Achilles. But then I look at a guy, and I know it's sacrilegious to say this because of the team that he's on. I cannot ignore what I'm seeing from Kevin Durant. And what I'm seeing from Kevin Durant, it's not just that it's 27, 8, and 5. It's the efficiency. It's shooting 56 and a half percent from the field. Kevin Durant is averaging 27 points on less than 17 shots a game. My God. And I understand everybody's talking about Max. I get it when you sit up there and say, well, he's open. But guess what? Kevin Durant has always been efficient. And he's getting into always. the flow of that offense. I'm just now. saying, yep. he's always been efficient. Now, if this was an aberration, if he never did this in Oklahoma City, you'd have me. But even as the number one option, Kevin Durant was shooting better than 50% from the field. Kevin Durant was shooting better than 40% from three-point range. Kevin Durant was averaging less than three turnovers a game. This is who he is. Well, there's, a lot this is who there, he is. there's a lot there I want to respond to. Number sure. one, he and Steph are going to split the vote. The MVP is not going to come out of Golden State. That's why we both picked Westbrook, let's be honest, no, before the season started. It's not why. We know, well, it's the reason I did, because the reality is they're going to split the vote, too. In a league where... 16 teams make the playoffs out of 30 teams. That means over 50% of the teams make the playoffs. An MVP will almost never be deserving if they're not on a playoff team. Basketball is the kind of sport, especially the way it's played in the NBA. If you have an MVP candidate legit, 
you will be at least the eighth seed in the playoffs, almost always. So given that, I don't know why they award a regular season MVP. I think they should wait till the end of the postseason to award the MVP. And in that case, it should always be LeBron James. But that's not the way it works. And because it doesn't work that way, you're going to come down to two players who don't split the vote with anyone else on their team and who are putting up gaudy numbers. That's Westbrook and Harden. Let me ask you something. Even if you think Harden is more efficient offensively, which he is, who's the better defender? (coughs) Well, there's no question. Right. So if it's close offensively and one's a much better defender, who's going to get it? Let me chime in. I'm not saying you're wrong about that. You. Do not get to make that argument. You shut your mouth. You just finished berating me because I brought up Clay Thompson in defense. But now you want to bring no, up Harden and Westbrook? Big oh, no, no, excuse me. Big the, the subject of defense, oh. you poo-pooed, dismissed, threw it in the garbage. Oh, no, and, and now, all, now all of a sudden, I didn't, we ain't talking That's boxing. We're talking, talking We're talking basketball. We ain't talking basketball. You didn't bring up defense. You just berated me. Yeah, you know why? You know why? You know why? Because huh. it's not a tiebreaker. It's not like Clay's just as good as Steph. Let's go to the tiebreaker. You don't get to revisit that hour later the argument you just did it argument that you made in the first hour you, you were, just you ignored it. clay thompson's defense now you want to bring up james right? harden no 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 you don't do that that's number one that that's number one number two again if i want to give russell westbrook love it's the fact that at 6'3", 6'4", the brother rebounds the way that he's doing. I give mad respect even though I see a lot of guys shooting jump shots against Oklahoma City because of Steven Adams and those boys down low. And as a result, he gets those long rebounds. I see that from Russell Westbrook as well. So the rebounding could be a bit a, a bit deceiving. But in the end, what I'm saying, all I'm saying is because right now, like I said, he would definitely be up there for league MVP with me as well. But I can't dismiss what I'm seeing from James Harden. And I cannot dismiss the efficiency of Kevin Durant. It's consistent. It's what he does. Westbrook's going to win the MVP, right? Like, it's a lock. That's a lock. That's happening. I don't know about that, Max. I believe he will. I believe he will. But it's not a lock. It's not a lock. It's too close, Max. No. Max, Max, it's, too, it's not close? No. Hold on. It's no. not close. No. Wait, because wait, if, but because what you're saying from Harden is not close? Look, no one's usage rate is going to wind up higher than Westbrook, so his numbers will also be the best. For those who are more sophisticated, as you are, and then go to the efficiency of the offense of Harden, that will be more than outweighed by the fact that Harden's a terrible defender and Westbrook is not. Listen, Westbrook's going to get the MVP. also something to be said, Molly. Mm-hmm. When you look at a Russell Westbrook, notoriously in a 40 to 42 percent range mm-hmm. shooting yep okay this is kevin durant the last five years 51 oh. 50, oh. 51 50 <laughs> and That's 50 a lot of fives. and a half what i'm saying Ooh. to you is this for every one for every two shots this dude takes he religiously makes one i cannot Ignore and he think he's going to be the running for MVP listen, for real. Guys, yeah, gotta move on. it's going to split the vote. Guys, we got to move on. Main news last week: admitting that he used medical marijuana for back pain in hopes the NBA would soften their stance. Telling the Warriors Insider podcast, "This I know enough, especially over the last couple of years, having gone through my own bout with chronic pain. I know enough about this stuff. Vicodin is not good for you. It's way worse for you than pot, especially if you're looking for a painkiller and you're talking about medical marijuana." the different strands, what they're able to do as a pain reliever. I think it's only a matter of time before the NBA and the NFL and Major League Baseball realize that. Now, Suns coach Earl Watson had a very different take on this subject, saying that as someone that grew up in the inner city, marijuana use can lead to trouble. Basically, our rhetoric on it has to be very careful because you have a lot of kids where I'm from that's reading this and they think marijuana use is cool. I don't know as far as the pain and how marijuana could help, but I think we have to be very careful how we present that to the public. We'll want to start with you here. Yes. Whose side are you on in this one? I lean towards Earl Watson in this debate. Um, now, let me lay down a few bona fides because I think this debate kind of gets reduced to are you a prude or do you like to party? Now, I have been on the record, most people know somewhat where my political leanings are. I'm conservative, but I'm also a conservative who advocated for relaxing drug laws because I think adults should be able to make bad decisions. I know I want to make a bad decision every once in a while. I'm, I think I'm, you have. I think you undercover, but go ahead. I'm not, I think you undercover. Clearly, I just do. I just do. I'm not we'll look, we'll look at the I mean, look. We'll look at the look, man. Every adult should be able to make their own decisions about themselves, and that should include some bad decisions. That being said, here's why Earl Watson, Watson is right. 
two points on this medical marijuana debate. Number one, I think the medical part of this debate is largely bogus. I think most people that are for medical marijuana are really for recreational marijuana, and they're doing this under the guise of a half-step measure. And I don't mean just individually, I mean states as well. Look at states that have gone to recreational marijuana like California, and they almost always go with some half-step measure of medical marijuana first. So I just appreciate a little honesty in the debate. If you want to legalize marijuana, as I just said that I think it should be, then say it. Don't sit here and get hung up and try to prove your case on medical marijuana. I'm not saying it doesn't have any benefits. I just think you're hiding the ball. Number two, this is most important why Earl Watson is right. The debate has been reduced into this point where we act like marijuana is harmless. Marijuana is not harmless. I said adults should be able to make bad decisions, but you don't get to pretend like it's not a bad decision. Marijuana in use with young people can retard brain development. Yes. And with adults, we've heard it anecdotally and through studies. Comedians have talked about, I've seen my friends who really like to smoke weed and somehow they disappeared from the, from the touring circuit. It reduces ambition. I'm not saying it's direct. If you smoke marijuana once, you're done with your ambition. But we know I it has negative effects. I think it's a tough argument to make that and in the, the arts it has a generally negative effect. But okay. Let me, but I just, you deal have with, to recognize right. this negative effect. I, I want to deal, I wanna deal I with it. I want y'all to go. Take yeah. it away. I want to deal with your point. It's one at a time. I think they're very good ones. In the first place, um, the argument that the medical argument is bogus. It's not bogus, but you and I are on the same page about that. I have, in this sense, I've always resented the fact that it has been pushed along medical lines because that's got nothing to do with anything. And the reason it is absolutely a half step, a half measure, is because culturally, this country has been lied to so often that culturally it's ingrained that somehow marijuana is worse than alcohol, which is obviously the standard. Speak, Matt, it is speak. actually, by all accounts, better than alcohol societally, and even to the individual has fewer drawbacks medically, etc. So there should be no medical argument, mainly because the recreational argument should really have been what's pushed, but too many people have been conditioned that way, and others are too stupid to understand the mm. argument, wow. or too closed off to listen to it. So you and I, in a sense, are on the same page there. In terms of Watson's point about, um, about the dangers of it for children. Absolutely true. It's not, even if you support the use of, of recreational marijuana because of alcohol laws, if that's the standard, it does have a bad effect on the teenage brain, the still developing brain. They, kids are watching. That, that people, have to, people have to pay attention to that. In addition, Mark Kleiman, the professor at, at UCLA, and I believe now at NYU, NYU and public UCLA? policy, that's right. <laughs> Okay. He has brought up, he has brought up uh, often, and he's crusades about this. Let him get to you, Max. Don't let him get to you, Max. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being informed. That, yes, you are. Yes, I am. I that, appreciate it. That, uh, it's a, a very moment. small percentage of alcohol users are, in fact, abusers, and the industry is aware of this, and that's to whom they are selling the product. But, so, like, 85%, some huge percentage of alcohol sales are to hardcore addicts, and the same thing will happen as, league, as weed is legalized in this country. There will be created a larger pool than currently exists of hardcore addicts for whom it becomes a problem, and that's to whom the industry will sell its product. It so sounds I'm like, Max, we don't here. have any disagreement. I, yes, however, that doesn't mean Steve Kerr is wrong to say marijuana is better than Vicodin, and that others are wrong to say, and if alcohol is the standard, marijuana should be legal. <sighs> you, you sufficiently hydrated? I must confess. I have to say this on national. I just have to. It's just on my soul. I have to say this. This is a beautiful moment for me. I mean, we are having a discussion about weed, and two of my white bro my white brothers are, are arguing about it. That has nothing to do with me. This is just a beautiful moment. I don't know if there was much of an argument. And I'm, just, I'm just saying, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a very touching moment. My brothers from other mothers, you understand? Are they here on first take with me? It has nothing to do with the brothers. You know, this is, The argument, the discussion is about weed and its use and beyond it. I, 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 just, I just got to sit back here and watch. I'm just very touched by this. That's number one. Number two, here's my thing. I agree with you to some point. I do believe in some cases, not all, perhaps not most, but certainly a healthy sum. Don't give me that nonsense about medicinal purposes. We all know you just want you just want to smoke Your medicine. You want that medicine. Just stop it, okay? I mean, it, 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 you know, and and that's where Earl Watson's point on a more serious note comes into play. 
because he talked about where he's from. And he's from Kansas City, Missouri. And you know the mean streets of Kansas City, Missouri. There's some spots there. I've been there on several occasions. People talk about certain areas. You know, I mean, when we talk about the inner city community, they got an inner city community. You know, white, black, and otherwise. And the fact is, is that there are challenges that the folks from desolate circumstances have to deal with. And drugs, obviously, are a prevalent issue. And so when you talk about it in a nonchalant manner, or you talk about it as if, you know, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you do have to pay attention to the fact that there are those who will hide behind it, use it as an excuse to engage recreationally in something that has no medicinal purpose for them whatsoever. And because of that, combined with the potential effects that you articulated, it needs to be addressed and treated with the seriousness it deserves. I think what's also behind this, and neither of you have mentioned this, I recall when Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted marijuana legalized in the state of California, and everybody talked about, you know, the mon- you know, the monetary, you know, benefits in it all. Tax this is There's some money in, in, in all of this. There's a reason why people are trying to find an excuse to legalize this, because the more... It, it, you know, the more states that legalize the use of marijuana, the more you'll find a way to be able to profit from it. And I don't think we need to escape that. And people are willing to sacrifice the health, the well-being of the working man and woman out there just to get some additional tax dollars. I don't think that can be ignored. I, just, I don't think Steve Kerr is completely wrong. I don't think he's in. I, I just he find is. more truth in Earl Watson's words because I think if you polled the average man on the street right now or woman on the street, there's a perception that marijuana is harmless and that it's natural and that there's no ill effects and you can't be addicted no, to marijuana. Right, right. And Earl Watson's right to point I out just, that's not I true. just want to make clear it is not harmless. It is a vice like any other. It is less harmful. I'm stating this as absolutely as I can based on all the information than alcohol. Alcohol is more harmful fine. than marijuana. Time out. Fine. Period. Fine. Last point. Yes. No disagreement there. But the problem is, is that you act like because that is the case, why not just legalize it? And I I'm guess saying, that's no. what I'm saying. No, no. Eradicate it then. Eradicate both then. Well, no. Impossible. I know that. I know that. No, I know that. But, but it but should I'm also be very clear. They are both vices. Fine. They are both no, no, not agree. good for you. I agree. I agree. No, no dispute there. This is a lovely little discussion. I mean, listen, it's touching for me. <laughs> thank it's, you. It's, thank it's, you it's so a much. rare moment, you know. I don't like you saying I got that look. I don't no, know what that you means. do. You do. Like a undercover well, brother. Individual. Undercover Thanks. brother. Coming up next.